Cups and Cardinals, Cody Bellinger gets to first to second, and here's the play you've asked about. They throw behind and they get him in a rundown. Bellinger, did he get by? Yes, he did. They call him out of the baseline. They... Hello, everyone. Lindsay here. You asked about this play. There are many moving parts, but before we get into it, let's just clarify, as we always do, that it's a base path that we're talking about, not a base line. It's such a judgment call. Starting at the beginning of the play, just want to get it out of the way. The pitcher did not balk, because that's the first thing you look for. Well, he didn't go far to avoid that tag. Next, let's get to rule 509B1 out of the base path. Any runner is out when they run more than three feet away from their base path to avoid being tagged, unless their action is to avoid interference with a fielder fielding a batted ball. A runner's base path is established when the tag attempt occurs and is a straight line from the runner to the base they are attempting to reach safely. A very important part of this rule that cannot be overlooked, you need a tag attempt for a base path violation issue to show up. If there is no tag attempt, then there is no base path issue. That's step right, he's passed him already. Very important to remember, tag attempt, you need to possess the baseball first. So while this ball is being thrown in the air on a rundown between these two players, until the player who's actually going to make that tag attempt possesses the baseball, you do not have a tag attempt and thus the base path cannot be calculated yet. As soon as that ball is caught and the fielder begins the tag attempt, draw the line at that time, but not a second earlier. Let's cue up the only camera angle that shows both the runner and the base at the time the base path is drawn. If at any point the runner runs more than three feet away to avoid a tag, even though he's already by the fielder, if he runs more than three feet away, he is out of the base path. All right, here's the base path, let's do it. That's really difficult to tell from this angle. I cannot make that call from here. I don't know about that one. Fortunately, there's a little dirt divot where his foot went in, so I have a visual reference to draw the base path, but. Is that three feet? Does that look like running more than three feet away from that base path line to avoid the tag attempt? If yes, it's out of the base path. If no, it's not. It's such a judgment call. In conclusion for the base path issue, I don't know if it happened here or not, but as an umpire, do not draw your base path too early because it looks a lot worse than it actually is if you do that. When we slowed this one down, it looked a lot closer than it did in real time because the runner veered to the right before the fielder possessed the ball, which the runner's allowed to do. You create your own base path, and when you're not avoiding a tag, because the ball's in the air, it's loose, so there is no tag to avoid, you can pretty much do whatever you want in terms of where you're running. But the question is, why did the runner veer to his right while the ball was still in the air? And to answer that, we look at the defender. We turn our attention to defense and ask, did Arenado obstruct Bellinger? Obstruction is the act of a fielder not in possession of the ball, not in the act of fielding a ball, who impedes the progress of any runner. Remember that this year there is a point of emphasis out there on obstruction, yes it applies to this play too, that states that, hey, some fielders are using the in the act of fielding loophole to try to obstruct runners illegally. So what the MLB says is, umpires, you need to pay attention. If the fielder is not legitimately occupying that space to field a throw, then it is obstruction, even if they would otherwise be considered, quote, in the act of fielding. In the act of fielding only goes so far as you occupying that space if necessary to field the throw. And the problem in rundowns specifically is that the fielder who is not in possession of the ball, who's setting up to eventually receive the ball, very often will get in the runner's way. And that is obstruction. That is literally the definition of obstruction because it impedes the progress of that runner before the fielder is in the legitimate act of fielding. And so the question is, did Arenado do that to Bellinger here? Bellinger has to veer to his right. He is impeded. The question is, does it fall under exception of possession or act of fielding? We look at the replay. We see that Arenado is already in his way before the ball is even released. He cannot be in the act of fielding until the ball is released, which means that this is obstruction type one. Remember the other day we said that on infield fly rule interference, the fielder has the right of way and the runner has to get out of the fielder's way or it's interference. This is the flip side. This is where the runner has the right of way and the fielder must get out of the runner's way unless they either possess or are in the act of fielding. I have Arenado doing nothing of those two here. 
His active fielding act, so to speak, occurs way too late after he has already impeded Bellinger. So I have obstruction type one. You might disagree with me, but I thought this was obstruction. Obstruction type one, the, there's an active play being made on the runner. The runner gets their next base. So Bellinger gets third and the trailing runner gets whatever base they would have ended up at had the obstruction not occurred. So that's called nullify the act. Arenado, what he did, he cut, the, he cut the length, but Gorman just... And that's the point that tips the scales for obstruction for me. Arenado is running at the runner without the ball and without even being in the act of fielding the ball because the fielder hadn't released it yet. That is why I have obstruction here. And if you call the obstruction, you don't even have to consider the thing about being out of the base path because it would be already dead at the moment of obstruction. Type A, not type B. Type 1, not 2. Anyway, thanks for the question. Visit us online, closecallsports.com. What do you think? Do you agree with that? Do you have something else? Let me know. And thank you so much to all of my supporters on Buy Me Coffee and Patreon, the list that is scrolling on your screen right now. Visit us online at Close Call Sports, like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the site.